Okay, so now we're going to start looking at the actual SPDF notation and how to actually write that. Um, but first we need to understand sort of where it's actually coming from. Um, so I'm going to start by bringing you back to this diagram here. So this is the ionization energies of the first 20 elements, and we looked at it in the last video. Um, and the reason that I want you to look at this alongside the periodic table here is so we understand how the electron orbitals, how the SPDF orbitals are actually filled um, and, and why they're filled in a certain way, in a certain order. So here we've got our first element, hydrogen. Okay, which would sit here on the periodic table. And so our first electron would be in our S, it's in the S block, so it's gonna be in our 1S orbital, and it's gonna have an electron going in one particular direction. So remember that the electrons, um, we can only have two in each orbital, and that's because one of them will uh, rotate or spin in an anti-clockwise um, direction and the other one will spin in a clockwise direction and so that's why it allows this magnetic attraction between them which allows them to stay in the same orbital um, otherwise as we know um, electrons they have the same charge so that so they'll will repel and that's why we can only have two electrons in each of these um, specific orbitals so that's hydrogen if we now go to helium over here helium is colored red because it is actually part of the s block um, in terms of the fact that this next electron is going to go in here okay so these are representing the fact that they're spinning in opposite directions and so we have the one is referring so the one s it's referring to the fact that it's actually in period one okay so one s there's now two electrons in there and so that's now full and our next element will move to the 2s so here's lithium so that makes sense we've got two and here it's still in the s block so the first electron will go in here and now the next one beryllium again it's still in the s block okay it's in period number two and so it's going to go in here like this now when we get to the p orbitals um, it happens a little bit differently. So I want you to look at this ionization energy here. Um, if they were to all fill up the same way, so here we were going like um, two in here and then this one and then the second one and then another two in here, another two, another two, this line here of the ionization energies would actually be straight. But as you can see, it's not straight. Okay, we have these little sort of abnormalities throughout it. So we're going to look at why that is. So here we've got beryllium. Our next element is boron, okay? And we can see here that now we've moved over to the P block and our first electron is going to go into our first P orbital. Now here, if we go up to carbon, carbon, the ionization energy is still increasing and it, the, the next electron for carbon actually doesn't go in this first orbital for P. It actually goes into the next one like this. Nitrogen, again, it doesn't go into either of these ones. It actually goes into the third one over here. But as you can see, oxygen, oxygen actually comes down a level. And that's because we've come back to this section here and there is some um, attraction and yet some repulsion within these um, electrons. And that actually brings the ionization energy down. So then from here, we keep going up. So we're now filling back in order again. Okay, and this would be neon, right? So if we had all of these boxes filled, we'd be looking at neon, all right, which is over here. Then we come back down, we've got 3S, and these would fill up the same way. Okay, so that would be sodium and magnesium. It's important for you to understand where these electron configurations are coming from and how the orbitals are actually filled, but it can get very confusing um, actually writing the notation using the periodic table. And so we do have another method that we can use. Um, firstly, the electron configuration uh, looks a bit like this. So the number out the front is referring to the actual period on the periodic table. Um, so this one here is referring to the first row. So that would be looking at either hydrogen or helium. And this number here is referring to the number of electrons that are in that specific shell, okay, or in that specific orbital, I should say. Um, and here, this is referring to which orbital it is, so whether it's an SPD or F orbital. So because it gets confusing, um, there's a method that we can use 
instead of just looking at the periodic table. Over here we can see um, that here are all our options for the orbitals, but it doesn't fill out in order. And so if you were in an examination or you were trying to work out your notation, um, it's actually easiest to write this out. So all you have to do is, is look down the first, um, the first block. Okay, so we're looking at S block here, and you can see that we have the S block for rows one to seven. All right, so you just fill it out. Now, we also know that S um, orbitals can only hold two electrons maximum. So we have one S2, two S2, three S2, all the way down to seven. Okay, then we jump over to the, the P block. All right, and we, um, from, um, two onwards, we have two P and then it can fit up to six electrons in it. Okay, then we go from three D and D orbitals can fit up to 10 electrons and then the F can fit up to 14 electrons. Now you won't actually need to go this far. Um, in fact, you probably only have to go around this area here. Um, but the way that they actually fill out is diagonal. So if we write diagonal lines through here like this, this actually gives us the order. Okay, so our first one here, 1s2. Okay, so that um, if we we're looking at specifically 1s2, we'd be looking at helium. So we've got the first um, period in the periodic table. Um, it's the S block, but it's got two electrons in it, so we must be looking at helium. So that is the electron configuration for helium. Then we go to 2s2, then we fill it up from 2p6, and then we jump to 3s2, and then 3p6. Okay, so you can see that it's filled up sort of diagonally on this little model that we have here. So let's have a go at writing some. So hydrogen, we have one S and there's one electron in that one S shell. Lithium, we've got three electrons here. So again, we start off here. And so the first two electrons are going to go into this one S2. Okay, the next electron is going to jump into the two S orbital, but it's only got one electron left. So that's the notation for lithium. Neon, okay, first two electrons are going to be in this 1s2 orbital, okay, the next two electrons are going to go into the 2s1, so two there, so now we've used out four of our ten electrons. Now the next one we jump to is 2p6, and we're actually, all last six electrons are going to fit there. So here we've got six plus two plus two, it's got ten electrons, so that's right for neon and that would be the notation for neon. What I'd like you to do is pause the video here and have a go at writing the SPDF notation for the following. Please be aware that you're actually following the diagonal line. So this fills up first, then 2s2, then 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then 3d10. Okay, so if you can go following these diagonal lines, that will help you a lot. And um, the answers are on the next screen. So. Pause the video here, have a go, then check your answers.